All right, guys. Well, welcome to our first media day ever. Hopefully, we'll do an annual. Uh, right now, we have the 2024 Boys <laughs> Cross Country team. Uh, our head coach, Jason Van Swell, which he's been our pioneer, our original uh, Boys Cross Country coach. Correct? Yes. All right. Um, last year, you had an extremely uh, successful summer, you know, and uh, we're merging into it. Uh, why don't you take us through um, uh, this year and what, what your goals and aspirations are? So we run a cross country camp over the summer and unlike most camps, this goes all summer. It's uh, two, three, four days a week and that's how cross country goes. Uh, it, your season success is dependent upon the training you did over the summer and our entire squad, these two, uh, Nick and Hunter, and our top 15 had incredible summers. So they've entered the season this year better than they were when they left the season last year, which is incredible. And we're really looking forward to see what they can do. What are your team's defensive strengths and weaknesses this season? The defensive strengths are that with cross country, obviously there's an offense. You have seven guys that are running in, a, in any race as a team, but only five score. It's like golf, you want the lowest score possible. A perfect score is one, two, three, four, five, you score 15 points, nobody can touch you. But your sixth and seventh runners can add points to another team. So as a defensive strategy, if you have a really quality sixth and seventh runner, even if they don't score for your team, they can help you beat another team because they add points. If your sixth and seventh runner beats their fifth, you've added points to their score. We have fantastic depth this year, better depth than we've ever had before. What do you think, um, what, what is the reason for that depth? What do you think that? Uh, the depth is that we've got leaders like Nick and Hunter who show everybody what effort really is. Because cross country, there's no skills. Uh, there are no, no tactics other than you've got to race as hard as you can. Follow the white line, turn at the flags, <laughs> and whoever is the, in the best shape wins. So the, these guys have shown our younger guys over the last couple of years what real effort means at practice. So when we say, this is the practice plan for today, and they go out and lead, everybody else follows. So when they set the pace for a run or repeats, you know, running laps on the track, the younger guys go, that's quality. I need to get as close to that as possible. So their effort has brought everybody from freshmen and eighth graders and seventh graders all the way up. The expectations are that we work hard, hard, hard. Awesome. Wow. I would say, you know, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but cross country, there's a lot of mental focus to it. Um, can you take us through some of that mental focus? Um, you know, you got Nick and Hunter. What what do they do to prepare a, a, for a race? And sure. There is. Not a misconception, but the understanding that you're just good at this. And if you're good at it, you do it. Uh, whereas, I mean, for, for Nick and Hunter, this is years of training, and the confidence goes into that. Every time we finish a workout, this week we've had two or three days where the workouts were incredibly difficult. They were incredibly successful. Wobbly legs at the end of the day, hanging on the fence, just trying to catch their breath, trying to drink some water that cool down run, those first few steps are incredibly painful, but every time they do that, it adds their confidence. When you line up for a race, you go, oh, I have prepared for this. I have prepared for this better than I ever have in my life. I, and that, that confidence lets you go out fast. And if you see somebody else who's running really well, you know they're very good, you are not intimidated by them anymore because you think, nobody worked harder than me this summer. Nobody worked harder than me during the off season. Uh, Coach, could you tell me a little bit about, um, well, I had a question, a little off topic, but did you watch the Olympics this year? And did any of your guys watch the Olympics? Was there a team event for that? The team event for? Like, hey, guys, you want to watch the Olympics together or anything like that? We didn't do anything like that as a team, but I know we discussed it quite a lot. I know the we did the 4x4 the four four last night at our community night. We definitely watched that. I didn't know who to root for. You know, I'm obviously an American. My last name and family come from the Netherlands. So it was, and my mom's family comes from England, so those top three teams, that for, for my family, we didn't care who won. We were just like, this is incredible. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about Hunter's background as a runner? Yeah, he was fantastic. His freshman year, he came out and immediately found success in cross country. 
and I think surprised a lot of people during our track season last year when, as a freshman, no one knew who he was, and then he was just fairly dominant on the freshman level. I don't think he ran a fresh off race last year because you were in the top guys. He broke two minutes as a freshman in the 800, which is unheard of, and he's in incredible shape this year. I can't wait to see what he can do. Two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> That's good. <As> a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> That's two times around the track. Wow. Uh, could you tell me about, well, Hunter, I'll ask you directly, um, when did you start to enjoy running? Well, in sixth grade, I got introduced to track and field. Like, I didn't know what track was or anything. And I ran track, and I was pretty good at it. And then all, like, the coaches and stuff was telling me to do cross country. Because I didn't know what cross country was until uh, the end of the sixth grade track season. and. Yeah, I just kept on going from there, doing cross country and track. It's interesting. The, I mean, that time, that time in the 800, that's a that's a sprinter time. I mean, you may be doing cross country, but that's really fast. Uh, so you did track first before cross country. You did what events did you do, or what when you were running the first? Uh, I was doing just the 800 just a mile and four by four. Yeah. Do they have two mile when you were a kid? They don't have it here. And so your first time doing cross country would have been after sixth grade or during sixth grade? After sixth grade, in seventh grade. So junior high, cross country. Did they do that in fall and track in the spring? Yeah. Cool. And then so do you feel like you take it any more seriously than you did then? Or is it the same mindset, just have fun? Or what do you think about it? I've definitely been trying to take it more seriously just because I know I'm getting better. And yeah. Okay. Nick, so um, we're gonna we're gonna touch on a little bit of, uh, of your career. So, what got you into um, cross country? Uh, so I did not think I was a runner. So freshman year, I was just doing cross country as a fill-in sport, just to you know get that three sports status. Then I uh, started dropping time, making times, and you know I got my uh, teammates telling me I should do track and try out for track. You know, so I did track, and then you know I was like, all right, if this is like. Something I'm good at, I'm gonna stick with it. So I kind of made running my sport to do and practice on and work hard. So who got you in? Uh, well, my grandpa we used to run like 5Ks. He's like, you should just do it for just to get better at. And so I did that, and I made friends on the, the cross country team, and you know, the vibes just kind of helped me awesome. stay with the sport. How old was your grandpa when he was running 5Ks? Uh, He's in his 60s now, so. Is he 60 when he was running them? Is he yeah. still running them? He's ran a lot in his life. He's done marathons wow. and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Do you look up to him? Yeah. Awesome. So, you mentioned three sports. What were your three sports? You said uh, cross country. Cross country, bowling, and out track. Bowling, okay. Yeah. So, uh, how did you get into bowling? Uh, when I was a young age, my dad put me in a league, and uh, I just kind of enjoyed it. Worked on it. I do it. I'm not gonna lie. We don't normally have a crossover between <laughs> cross country and bowling, yeah. but that might be a first. What's your so. average? Uh, right now for my uh, summer league, it's like a 192. Ooh. Now, do you um, run with a bowling ball? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if you're trained with that. All right. So, um, you know, Coach, uh, I know you you got a pretty good history here. You opened up. The school with cross country head coach, track and field head coach. Um, previously, yeah, I knew you from Lincoln Way Central back in the day. Um, set a lot of school records. I don't know if we we know your little bit of history, but why don't you take us through your history and what you got you into um, the sport that you're doing right now? Ironically, Scott Tingley was my basketball coach for for summer camp and freshman year in about 1994, 95. And he very kindly and gently encouraged me to try track and field and cross country versus basketball for obvious reasons during that season. <laughs> and I didn't plan on doing it, but I, I showed up and I really got along with the guys there. It was a camaraderie. And I think that's something that gets a lot of people in. Like they said, once you show up, I mean, the intimidation factor is strong for cross country and track. People just think it's so difficult and grueling. but you end up having this 
bond with your teammates. And I'm still friends with those guys today. Uh, I've, I've known them for 30 years and we still hang out. And I'm going to go see them this weekend. That was the key because you enjoyed being with them and then you wanted as a team to get better because you want your friend to get better. The camaraderie is competitive, but you get joy and satisfaction of seeing your teammates be successful as well. So there's no bench in cross country or track. And that was the best thing because I was very familiar with the bench for basketball. Whereas I always got to compete. If you worked hard and you got better, you got to compete more and more and more. And throughout high school, that just became this fire that lit in me and what I would love to see happen in these guys. And both of them kind of flipped a switch last year that I recognized in myself. I went, these guys are enjoying themselves. Do you remember the Rich Township meet, that two mile? Bagley, or you and Jackson and that one guy racing. Oh, yeah. And you turned it on. I saw him flip that switch and went, I'm not messing around with these guys. And he just went and he finished the race in this, he's sweaty and his face is red and he can't barely catch his breath, but he has this huge smile on his face. And I went, he's in. And that's what hooks you in because it doesn't matter if you win a race, it did to me, but it doesn't matter if you win a race, but if you set a personal record, you go, ah, that's the fastest I've ever gone. That's the fastest I've ever gone in my life. There's this euphoric rush that is, I'll say addictive, and I think these guys might agree with me. When you're warming up for a race, you're so nervous. You're so nervous, and you think to yourself, why am I doing this to myself? This is such a difficult sport. Why did I pick this? I could have played golf. That's so much fun. <laughs> golf for the rest of my life. And then you start the race, you have a successful race, you finish the race and you think, when do I get to do it again? And that's what I love about these guys. Awesome. Yeah. So would you say you probably owe Dr. Tingley your athletic scholarship then? 100%. <laughs> I would never have done it without him. You know, he said basically, you may not have a spot on the sophomore team. I don't think you'd make the team next year. And he was being, I knew that. He's not saying anything that wasn't obvious. It's like, but you are pretty fast for a basketball player. So I went out for track and it turns out I was pretty fast in general. And that's something that you can develop. You know, basketball skills or golf or any of these other sports, those skills take years and years and years to develop. And track does too, but your personality and your effort that you put into it. You can't try harder and get better at a skill in basketball. You have to put in the time for over years and hopefully capitalize on your talent. Whereas with track and definitely cross country, it is about work. If you put in the work, you will improve and be successful. That's the best part about the sport. So I know you're being modest. Can you tell us where you went to school for college? Sure, I, did I ran for the University of Illinois. Um, I ran the 800 and 400, four by four. Uh, we, I was the five time Big Ten champion. I set the record for most wins on the indoor season. And then I qualified six times for the NCAAs. It was all American in 2001. I qualified for the Sydney Games trials. Didn't quite make the team that year. Uh, but I did get to compete in California for the trials for the Sydney Games. Wow. Yeah. It's very impressive. impressive. Um, I understand that. I've, I've been around you long enough to know that. You know, I think some of these younger guys, they don't even know it. So, you know, be fortunate who you, you're uh, uh, put with. Um, you're in good hands. Uh, we appreciate everything you've done. Uh, Coach, uh, any, anything else? Sure. What's your best 800? What was your best 800? My best 800 time was 145.9. All right. And your best hitter? Uh, 159.98. I'm crazy. So <laughs> I'm not diminishing what he did. It's amazing accomplishments. And it's only right. But like, isn't that weird that you're that close to his peak at 800 already? <laughs> isn't that strange? To interject, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but my freshman PR, I had to look it up, was 207. That's really good too, though. So he's <laughs> much faster than I was at his age. Wow. So. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> Hunter, did you watch the Olympics? Yeah. Any runners, female, male, that you really liked watching? You know, I just, not really in general, just I like to watch the Olympics and the 1500. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the comeback that Cole had, or, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. It was. So that kind of leads into, uh, you know, maybe our last question here, but uh, last night, 
the 4x400 co-ed, okay? Um, were both of you on that, those teams? Uh, who won it? Uh, not us. We were on the team. You were on the team. Yeah. You've got all these uh, records already, and you both lost. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that tells you the depth that we have. I agree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to our, our also our ladies, they, they did well. It was a, a close finish. Yeah. It was good. Uh, did you lose anything from that? Was there a sideways uh, bet I heard? Yeah, there was. <laughs> it was Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's, <laughs> all right. So I appreciate that. Well, thanks for coming out. Um, you know, at this point in time, we're gonna, uh, we'll bring in the girls and uh, we'll talk to them a little bit. Thanks guys.